So I graduated in 1977, shortly after I turned 21. I think at the time I was so focused on becoming a nurse, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the larger health science center community, or really um, didn't pay attention to much more than what was going on in my specific cohort of students and could I get a job afterwards. I came back to school five years later to um, pursue a master's degree. And at the time I was active duty military. So again, um, I, I think I was very focused on earning a degree, thinking about how my career would change after that degree and not so focused on uh, the larger health science center community. That said, I think uh, one of the big changes I've seen um, at the time I earned my bachelor's and master's degree, I felt like the school was really a commuter school. I came, I did what I needed to do, I had my life outside the university. I'm really happy to see now uh, so many more opportunities for students to engage in the larger health science center community, um, both in um, service events, but just things like burger burn and uh, 5K for heart uh, disease that the entire campus participates. Or, or Tuesday, they had uh, the holiday concert by the San Antonio Symphony that was open to the larger health science center community. I'm not sure those things existed in the 70s and 80s when I was a student here. I always knew I wanted a PhD, I, want, I wanted a doctoral degree, and I knew I wanted at some point in my career to be an academician. And I knew I wanted to do that at UT Health School of Nursing. I also knew having earned two degrees from the School of Nursing, I needed to go someplace else to um, obtain a PhD. So I was fortunate enough to be living in Florida and uh, was accepted to the PhD program at the University of Miami. We moved back to San Antonio, and I, I actually worked for Methodist Healthcare um, before coming to the School of Nursing after I'd earned my PhD. Uh, Dr. Gail Williams, a longtime faculty member, actually recruited me to come to the School of Nursing. Uh, I would see her, she taught childbirth classes for Methodists, and she'd be like, why don't you come, you have a PhD, come to the School of Nursing. So um, I came for an interview, I came back, um, and uh, this is like a dream because I always wanted to come back here. I'm an international board certified lactation consultant. My background is maternal child nursing, my master's degree is in that. Um, I was hired by Women's and Children's, who then merged with Methodists to set up their inpatient and outpatient lactation program, which I did and ran, and then came to the School of Nursing and pursued my research area of interest, which is breastfeeding support. Um, pursuing that research interest allowed me to recruit students to work with me on research grants. Um, and actually, I have to, um, to share with you, so a couple years ago, we had a PhD graduate, Dr. Kelly McLaughlin, who was in our BSN to PhD program. She actually worked with me as an undergraduate nursing student on one of my breastfeeding grants. I ended up uh, working in mother-baby care at University Hospital for a year while she obtained her International Board Certified Lactation Consultant certification and then came back to school in our BSN to PhD program. Um, her dissertation was breastfeeding research and I was her dissertation chair. So I've been very fortunate here because um, my research and my teaching weave together. Uh, I was really focused on learning that academic role, and then I had a really good mentor 
uh, who helped me understand my role as a scientist, uh, helped me understand uh, pursuing research grants, conducting research, and publishing. Um, at the time, the faculty were very collegial. Everybody helped everybody else. We used to do things uh, on weekends and evenings together. It was like a big family and a very, very pleasant place to work, and probably why I've been here for 20 years. Nursing research is vital to our profession. Uh, we own a bo body of knowledge uh, that improves patient care. So without nurse researchers, we can't grow that body of knowledge to deliver quality care to our patients. So in my role as associate dean for uh, graduate studies, I also oversee the PhD program and the DMP program. So a little different in terms of PhD students conduct research have a product at the end. DMP students conduct quality improvement projects, have a product at the end. I tell all of them, it's not done till you disseminate it. Because if we keep it to ourselves, how does the world know about our new discoveries? So um, Monday I mentioned the DMP students presented their final QI projects and they were all good. Some were stellar. I've already sent them the Squire 2 guidelines so that they can uh, write up their projects in a format that's acceptable for publication in journals. I've sent them the Jane uh, journal finder so that they can put in some keywords and see where might be best to submit their manuscripts and I've offered to review them prior to submission. I firmly, firmly believe that you have to publish what you've done or else you're not finished. I've been active in encouraging graduate students to participate, particularly nurse practitioner students, because in Texas, nurse practitioners do not have full scope authority like they do in other states. And I feel like it's very important for them to find their voice and to meet with legislators um, to help inform policies that are gonna impact their practice. Um, a couple years ago, we took um, several undergraduate and graduate students to D.C. for Policy Day, and we actually took them um, with AACN to Capitol visits, again, to meet with legislators and, and talk about things that are important to nursing. They had a voice, that their voice mattered, and they're on the front lines and see um, what the issues are in healthcare, and that sharing their voice with their legislators could affect change. Currently, nurse practitioner students are educated at a master's degree level, but we know, given the changing healthcare climate, that we need leaders and we need them to be the best they can be. So we've been approved by the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board to admit students fall 2019 in our Bachelor of Science to Doctor of Nursing Practice degree in four tracks, pediatric nurse practitioner, family nurse practitioner, adult gero acute care nurse practitioner, and psych mental health nurse practitioner. So these students will in a earn a DMP. These students will earn a DMP after they graduate, and they'll be undergirded with leadership, policy, healthcare economic, and uh, change process skills that they might not have received in a master's program. 
I feel like this will impact healthcare in a very positive way. I think it um, impacts the efficiency of our healthcare system. So many times, uh, potential patients don't get the efficient quality care they need because their care gets wrapped up in bureaucracy and slow moving um, changes in facilities. So, um, especially when I think about some of the DMP projects that were uh, presented on Monday, I can give you an example of one that, that I think uh, while it may sound like a small change, can really impact uh, women's health. So one of our students is an FMP working at a rural clinic in South Texas. She refers patients for mammography as appropriate, but the mammography uh, referral system was, was clunky and sometimes patients didn't get the referral. Sometimes uh, patients didn't get what they needed in terms of follow-up. So she uh, led a process at her facility so patients who had mammography, mammography referrals left the clinic with the date and time their mammography was scheduled for. They didn't have to go home and wait for a letter. They didn't have to go home and wait for a phone call. And that's a huge change that you can walk out with an appointment that you need to stay healthy. And let's say they had an untoward outcome, detected sooner, follow-up care sooner. I feel like the reason I'm at the Health Science Center is because students want to come here to learn. And I feel um, that I've been blessed that I can help them learn and achieve their goals like people did for me. So receiving that award um, was a wonderful acknowledgement that I was doing what I wanted to do in terms of um, teaching the next generation of nurses to hopefully improve um, healthcare. I had a lot of really good mentors and role models. I had a lot of people that helped me along the way. And uh, to coin Michelle Obama, I feel like those doors were opened for me and it's my responsibility to put my hand back and bring other people through the door so I've been very blessed that I have this unique opportunity to impact the next generation, and I take it very seriously. That's why I'm here. Healthcare change is constant these days. Um, people are sicker. Um, a lot of people have less resources to obtain good health care. So, uh, and, and we live in a city that has uh, some of the worst health care outcomes in the country. We have higher rates of diabetes. We have higher rates of teen pregnancy. We have one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the country. So uh, both the undergraduate Associate Dean and I have to be constantly on our toes thinking about what's the best way to help students learn how to work or prepare students to work in this constantly changing healthcare system. It's not really teaching them about who's at the highest risk for maternal mortality, while that is important. It's about teaching them how to think critically and to pay attention to nuances and to advocate for patients. And I think that's a huge curriculum shift uh, from when I went to school and we memorized things. Um, 
We are constantly evaluating our curriculum to make sure that the content's appropriate and the delivery methods are appropriate. We um, value student evaluations. Uh, we value peer evaluations. Uh, we look at what other schools are doing. Um, it's, it's a continuous quality improvement project. So I think nursing is a profession that has a lot of different opportunities. Um, you have lots of choices about how you want to use that knowledge and skill set. Um, I've been very fortunate because I've been able to work in a hospital, taking care of patients at the bedside. I've been able to um, work in outpatient settings. I owned a lactation consulting business. I've taught, and I can morph those things around what's going on with my family, um, which is wonderful. I don't feel like I had to miss anything from my son's growing up. I didn't miss school activities. I, I didn't miss holidays because I have such flexibility in terms of being a nurse. He might tell you something different, but I don't think so. Um, and I just think, you know, over the years, my focus has changed, but I don't regret anything I've done. I don't regret being a nurse. I, I think there are a lot of opportunities open for women these days in terms of career that weren't open when I graduated from high school, but I can't imagine choosing anything different. I don't, I have no regrets. I'm not sure I did it the right way. So I came in as an assistant professor on the clinical track. Um, at the time, my department chair wouldn't hire any junior faculty on the tenure track. So um, I came in on the clinical track, although I still focused on research and teaching, uh, thanks to a good mentor. I switched from the, no, I didn't switch. I uh, went up for promotion to associate professor on the clinical track. Then I uh, switched to the tenure track. Then I got tenured. <laughs> then I was promoted to full professor and I was already tenured. And uh, so that was my academic trajectory, but I had a lot of different roles uh, since I've been here. I started out as a junior teaching faculty in the undergraduate program. I taught a couple graduate courses, uh, specifically the graduate research course, which I loved. Um, I became the course coordinator for the undergraduate OB course. I've led uh, curriculum committees for both the graduate and the undergraduate program. I think I've been on every committee there is in the School of Nursing. I've chaired the search committee. I've chaired the promotion and tenure committee. Um, so uh, I started teaching some in the PhD program because my background research methodology have a lot of training and qualitative methods. Uh, then I became the PhD program director and um, then there was some restructuring after our academic dean left, and I applied and was chosen for the graduate dean. That's really special to me. Um, one of my dreams always was to be associate dean for graduate studies, I think in part because of uh, Dr. Bev Robinson's influence. Um, she was a great associate dean for graduate studies. I admired how she worked with faculty and how she led the graduate faculty. So uh, I'm just honored to have this position and I, I thank her leadership for um, helping me see, wow, I could do that. So I went to a school that was heavily seeped in qualitative methodology. I, I still had training in all the qualitative methods, took all the statistics courses uh, that everybody else takes, but uh, we had a number of anthropologists on our faculty. 
Um, so I, I actually ended up taking five qualitative methods courses while I was in my PhD program and then doing a qualitative dissertation. I think qualitative research is kind of like precision medicine. Um, qualitative methods focus on people's experiences and um, can lead to interventions that are based on people's specific context uh, rather than rolling out an intervention that's not contextually based, that potentially may not um, meet people's needs. So I'm a firm believer in um, using qualitative methods to understand phenomena when we don't know a whole lot about it. Um, I can give you an example. So I've, I, I've done quite a bit of um, breastfeeding research, both quali using qualitative methods and quantitative methods. I learned from several of the qualitative research studies that um, mothers didn't continue to breastfeed because they were concerned that their babies weren't gaining weight, that they couldn't see what was in their breasts, so how would they know if their babies were healthy? So in a, a qualitative study, I'm sorry, in a quantitative study that we were doing to extend uh, exclusivity and duration, uh, we made home visits to a group of women in San Antonio. Based on our understanding that they were concerned about their babies gaining weight, we took a scale and at every home visit we weighed their baby and they would see their baby gained weight and they'd get this big smile on their face and they'd keep breastfeeding till our next visit. We didn't do any um, thing medical. We just let them see their babies gained weight giving them confidence in the, their body's ability to produce enough milk and it impacted their duration. I don't think we would have known to do that had we not done the qualitative studies prior. In summary, I'd like to say I think the School of Nursing is an excellent, excellent School of Nursing. I'd recommend it to anybody. I think the faculty, staff are committed to the best quality education for students and it's a great place to work.